Hi everyone, welcome to this demo of Lead Formly. So in this demo, we're gonna be walking through step-by-step -step how to build a form like the one on the Lead Formly homepage. And I'm also going to be answering some of the common questions that we get asked around how to how Lead Formly works and how you can actually build forms. So just in case you're wondering, Lead Formly is a, high, a tool that we built to make it really easy for, for marketing people to build high converting lead capture forms. We've spent a couple of years really kind of analyzing what it is that makes a form convert and we've identified over 58 individual best practices around form design that we've built into all of the form, all of the lead formally forms, so that instead of you having to A-B test forms for years and identify all of these kind of best practices yourself, all you need to do is go to lead formally, choose a template, customize it to match your website, embed it on your website, and you're going to have a very high converting form um, in, in far less time. So just to give you a very quick example of how a lead formally form works, we've got one here on the lead formally homepage. So I'm gonna click agency. As you can see, the, the user experience, we, we tend to use these kind of multi-step forms. We've found that multi-step forms convert much better than having all of the questions on one step. And one of the, the kind of key differences with lead formally forms is that you can use them to segment your audience into different buckets. So you might have noticed at the start of that form, I clicked uh, agency as the type of company that we are. And now when I submit the form, I'm taken to a page that talks about agencies. And so you can actually, as soon as people fill out your form, you can actually um, put, the, put send them on these different pathways that are tailored to the type of business or the, the budget that they have. The point being that you can put all of the visitors on your site into these different buckets so that you can then tailor how you market to those people. So what I'm gonna do now is, is give you a kind of a quick tour of the products and show you inside Lead Formly. So when you start using Lead Formly, the first thing that you'll see is a page like this where you can choose from one of our many templates to get started. So a template is just a pre-built form that we've designed at Lead Formly and you can, you can add your own questions, you can change the design to match your branding, but it just gives you a really kind of good starting point um, so that you, know, you can get, get up and running a lot sooner. So you can view demos of, of these different forms and see how they all work. What I'm gonna do for this demo is use the Lead Formly form template. So I'm gonna click use this template and this is gonna take us to the form builder, which is where we add the, the questions in our form. So this is not, on this section of the, the form builder, we're not thinking too much about design, we're just thinking about the questions and the steps in our form. So here you can see we've got a one, two, three step form. If we want to add more steps in our form, we can just click the plus button. And then on each step, we have the questions that appear in that step. So on step two, we're asking for the website URL. On the final step, we're asking for an email address. So if we wanted to add an extra question on the final step, we could just click this plus button and we could say, what is your name? And that could be a short text field. We have many different question types if you want to use Image select questions are one of my favorite. Uh, image select being um, the type of question that we saw at the beginning of the of this one. So these nice big clickable images. We just find that they're very visually engaging and they only take one click to answer. So, that's, so they tend to work very, very well. And it makes the form not feel like a form. It just makes it feel a bit more engaging. So you can choose image select. We have sliders, toggle switches, date pickers. So you have a, a real variety of different question types that you can choose from. Um, so one thing um, that I do want to, to quickly show um, you how to do, because it is something that, that we get asked a lot, is how to use conditional logic. So conditional logic allows you to display different questions to different people based on the answers that they've given to previous questions. So for example, let's imagine someone says that they're an agency. We might want to add a new question here or on the next step saying, what's the name of your agency or how many clients does your agency have? So to do this, all you need to do in Lead Formly is click display conditionally. Um, only certain questions can be conditional. Um, so this one, for example, um, we can say only display this question if, how do you describe your company is agency? And so if we just try that here, you can see that that question displays uh, if a person says that they're an agency. For everyone else, do this instead. Skip this question, or you could ask them a new question or send them to the final step. 
So that's more or less the, the kind of the gist of the form builder. Really all we're doing here is we're adding our questions, we're changing the, um, the titles of our questions and the kind of the flow of, the, of how the form works. If you want to do segmentation, um, like I showed you sending after someone submits the form, sending some people to one URL and some people to a different URL, you can use conditional logic on the final steps. You could say, show this final step to people that said, how would you describe your company agency for everyone else? Display a different final step instead. So I'm just gonna go back to that. So once you've finished adding your questions, you're happy with the flow of the form, the steps, the questions, the call to action, what you can now do is click save and customize my form. And this is going to take you to the form customizer. So the customizer is where you design your form. This is where we're talking about the colors and the look and feel of how everything works. So the first thing I'd recommend doing is playing around with themes. So, so themes won't change the questions in your form. They will just change the look and feel, the color scheme. So here we could try maybe the tech green theme. And you can see the questions are the same. It's not changed any of our questions. It's simply added a, a kind of a gray and green theme. We could go for bright pink, maybe not. <laughs> and so I'm gonna pull it back to this lead formally purple theme. So just to kind of give you a quick overview of everything that you can do here in the, the customizer, there's quite a lot to it. So I'm, I'm just gonna kind of go over the main themes. We have um, at the top here, as I've showed you already, the ability to choose and toggle between different themes. Then we have the styling panel. So if you want to change all of the form fields in the, uh, in the form, for example, you can update everything in one go. If you want to make it transparent, you can add transparency. We can make it entirely transparent. We do things like that. So you can change all of the everything, all of the fields, all of the buttons in one go. If you want to change things like the fonts, same again, you can uh, change it here and it's going to update all of the fonts in your form in one go. So everything is kind of really point and click. We built this for non-developers. So this is really designed for marketing people um, that you know you don't need to know CSS, you don't need to know how to code to build a really interactive um, and powerful form. So we can do things like change the, the borders, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so progress bars, again, we can do things like if we want to make this animated, we can. We can add this sort of nice, steady effect. Um, advanced fields, if you want to, for example, when we hover over this, you can see there's like a blue, this blue hand appears, and then when I click it, it turns into a tick. If you wanted to change maybe the colors of how that looks, what you can do is you can go to select an image, I want to change, and we'll change it from default to hover. And you can see that we have this blue color here. If you want to change that to green, for example, maybe a little bit of transparency so that you can see the icon behind it, we can change it to that. And as you can see, that's updated that to this kind of green effect. And then the, the tick, the green one, is the active style. So again, we might want to have the same green, but a little bit darker. But you, if you don't, you know, if you don't want to, to kind of, um, play around with these changes. Of course, we've kind of preset what we'd recommend in the themes. So if we just update that back to the theme, you can always go back to the, the recommended style. So that's the, the styling panel. Down here we have design and preview mode. So design mode means that if you, if you hover over things, you can drag and drop. Um, if you want to change the text, you can simply click things um, and just change everything uh, in a kind of a point and click, drag and drop fashion. If you want to test your form and actually use it as if you were a user, you can click on preview mode and then that um, allows you to see how your form um, would work for a live user. Then we have the, uh, the step drop down, so you, you can just toggle between the different steps without having to use the form itself. And then once you're happy with the general look and feel of your form, you can click add to website. Now this is not essential. Um, but it is re I would recommend it. So if you want to add a value to your leads, let's say each lead is maybe a worth $100. This is, it, when we um, look at the reporting later, this is going to, every time you get a lead, it's going to assign um, a value to those leads. So you can see 
how much ROI um, and what value of leads uh, your form is generating. So once we're happy, we can click get embed code and this is going to give us two embed codes. We have a simple embed code and we have a raw embed code. So the raw embed code loads faster and it gives you all of the HTML and CSS so that you know, if you have a developer or um, an IT person, they can play around with, with the code and, and uh, make changes. But if you, don't, um, if you don't want to make changes to any of the code, um, you can use the simple embed code. So I'm going to use I'm going to use the simple embed code for now. So I'm going to show you now how to embed a lead form lead form on a live website. So I want the form to look something like this. We've got this test page which obviously has this gap here. So what I'm going to do, we use WordPress for this website. So I'm going to log into WordPress. I'm just going to copy and paste the code here. So this is just in a in a section that is going to hopefully load here. So I'm going to update the page. And then if we go to this URL and we refresh the page, we should see that our form appears. So as you can see, it's worked, but it looks a bit funny. So we can now go back to, to our form. We can we can first start to realize why why does it look funny? Well, it's, it's not quite the right width and it seems to have this background and the website already has a background. So to change the width of the form, we might first want to change this. We can increase this from 90% width to 100%. We also need to get rid of the background. So um, what I'm going to do in this instance, I'm just going to say background none. Um, what you can do is you can just use this background color changer. So you, you can just set it to transparent. And as you can see, this has now removed the background. I usually like to build forms with a background color because it, particularly in this instance, if it's going on a dark background, um, the lead formly window is, is a light background. So it's easier to kind of build with a dark background. Um, but when you, when you get to the point of embedding it, sometimes you might want to change that to a transparent background. So if we try again now, let's get our, let's get our embed code. We can quickly update it. And let's just see. Already, that's looking much, much better. So we can use use the form and make sure everything's looking good. So once you're happy with how your form looks and, it's, and is loading on your website, the next thing you might want to do is connect it to your CRM. Um, and so we do have a few native integrations that you can use. If you're using ActiveCampaign, Aweber, or Mailchimp, you can just connect Lead Formly with your CRM directly from the form builder underneath the section that says call to action. So you can click here where it says send my leads to a CRM email service. And then you can choose MailChimp, Aweber, ActiveCampaign, and then configure all the options to send your leads directly to a list. However, if you're using something like Pardot, Salesforce, Marketo, HubSpot, um, we connect over 750 different CRMs and different email marketing and automation tools via Zapier. So all you need to do to create a Zap, um, a Zap is go to Zapier, create an account. I think it's free if for up to 100 uh, tasks, I think they call it, per month. So you can click make a Zap. What you need to do is search for lead formally. It's, uh, and then when a new lead arrives, so save and continue. I've got lots of these test accounts. I'm just going to choose the correct one, number seven. So you should be able to uh, see the form that you've created. Select it here as a form. This one is, uh, we've not, so one thing with Zapier is that you need to have at least one lead for it to, for Zapier to know that it's working. So here it says we could not find a lead, but that's because it's a new form, we, we've just built it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just skip that test and continue because that we'll know that that will uh, work later. And then the next thing is you need to choose an action app. So this is your CRM. It's whatever tool you want to send your leads into. So if we take, for example, um, we could try Salesforce or yeah, let's go for Salesforce. So we might want to say when a new lead arrives in lead formally, create a lead in Salesforce, save and continue. 
Um, we don't actually have a Salesforce account. We use a different CRM, but you'd connect your account here and then you'd map all of the fields from your lead formally form into your um, how you um, structure things in your Salesforce account or whichever CRM you're using. Oh. So that's more or less how you would connect lead formally to a CRM. Um, once you start getting leads, we have a full reporting uh, reporting suite in lead formally. So you can see all how many visits your form has had, how many leads, the conversion rate, and then because we've assigned a value uh, to each lead that, that comes through our form, you can see the total value of leads um, coming through your form. And we have many different reports to show you how your forms are performing, the conversion rates, so that you can compare. Uh, if you're running multiple different forms, um, you can sort of compare which ones are working and which ones are not working. We have a full report of all of the leads that have filled out your forms so that you can go in and see any of the leads, see what they selected in your lead formally form. So this is particularly useful if you're not using a CRM system, um, this just shows you all of the leads. And if you want to set up notifications, we can email you when a new lead arrives and this um, you can pop in email addresses of different people on your team um, so that you're notified instantly every time a new lead arrives. If you only want to be notified of certain leads, you can say only, only email me if lead matches the following conditions. So perhaps people with a budget, you know, if you've asked for budget, you might say only email me if the lead has a budget above $500. Um, and you can also select whether you want to receive lead notifications immediately as, as the lead comes, a daily summary, a weekly summary, or monthly summary. You can also trigger an email to be sent to your leads. So if you want to, as soon as a lead submits your form, send them an email saying, thanks for getting in touch. Um, this sounds like an interesting project. Please let me know one would suit you for a phone call. Um, you can automatically send uh, these emails. Um, and you can always download all of your leads uh, to a CSV file. So I'll leave it there for the time being. That's that's more or less lead formally in a nutshell. If you decide to get started and you have run into any issues of any kind, what you can do in the lead, lead formally platform is click this little blue circle down the bottom and you can then just make a search. So for example, API key, and then you can read an article on how to solve uh, that particular issue uh, directly from inside the platform. And if you, if you can't find an answer to the issue or you need a little bit of help, feel free to send us a message here and just tell us a little bit about you know what, what you're having issues with and one of our team will get straight back in touch with you and try to help uh, help you solve that issue. Um, but yeah, any other questions, feel free to email us at support at leadformly.com and I hope this has been useful.